What's up guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Stefan, and uh, today is car shopping video number two. Last time we looked at the Supra, today we're at Secured Auto Brokers, and we've got a treat for you. That's right, so secured auto brokers, that means this car is actually for sale. This is a legitimate option. They have everything under the sun here, including this super sick H1. This thing isn't like lifted very high, but I bet it could go anywhere. These trucks are just so wide. I can't believe how wide that is. That's so insane. Oh, that thing looks so good. <laughs> Here it is, the Audi R8 Gen 1. This is a 2008, and here's the kicker. <laughs> it's got a BES supercharger on it. This thing is gonna rip. I haven't driven it yet, but man, it looks so good. This car is like a diamond in the rough. All the way here in Utah, some random Audi R8 with a supercharger on it. I just, it, it's just, I didn't expect to find this here. So a few other noteworthy things. It's got this Alcantara wrapped steering wheel, which is so sick. It is a gated six speed manual, which, come on. Come on, that's like just the coolest. The, the PES supercharger, it does have methanol injection too, which keeps like the temps a little bit cooler and you can run higher boost. So this thing is probably gonna rip. Fortunately, all wheel drive, uh, again, the carbon duct bill. But the real question is, how does it perform as a family car? I have two kids, I have a wife, and obviously I have the Tacoma too, which the kids can fit in, but I mean, Say I'm, I'm coming home from work one day and the wife's like, yo, I need you to run to the store and grab diapers. What am I gonna do? So naturally, we need to know how much trunk space it has. Does it fit the bill? Does it perform well as a family car? We got the pull-ups. We got the Huggies little movers. So far, so good. Because you know, when my kid's at home pooping out of control, I gotta be able to provide. I gotta provide diapers. And the general consensus, I'd say that performs very well as a family car. Two entire boxes of diapers. This thing's ready to go. I think I convinced the wife that uh, this is a very practical option for a family car. One of the things that is just like the most iconic about the R8 is like the headlights. It's just got like that signature Audi look. It looks so good. I still remember seeing this car in the original, like the OG Iron Man movies and seeing Tony Stark pull up in this thing and I was just like, yo. So a quick little peek around. This car does seem to be pretty big person friendly. I'm like 6'2"-ish um, and it fits me just fine. I'd be super comfortable driving this every day. Again, the six speed manual, this is so sick. Those shifts would be just so sad satisfying and then again on the note of a family car look you can play your tunes rock your babies to sleep while they just chill right, <laughs> chill right here and then of course here under the rear deck lid the PES supercharger system so something to consider here with this is this I'm pretty sure this kit is discontinued so if I needed any sort of support for it I'd be kind of on my own I'd either have to find somebody who has worked on a PES supercharger system before or I don't know, I mean, just figure something out. It'd essentially be up to me. So I got my man Tony in the driver's seat. Uh, he's gonna give us some reps. He said this car is making upwards of like 670 horsepower. All right, go ahead, Tony, whenever you're ready. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, that's amazing. Yo, thank you, dude. <laughs> Another thing to note that Tony pointed out, it's got a full Brembo brake kit. I don't know what came on it stock, but. Man, those brakes are massive and you need it, you need it. So when you up the horsepower, a lot of people don't up the stopping power, which is super important. Because if you're going, you need to be able to stop. And if you're stopping, you need to be able to... Anyway. So fortunately, we caught a pretty nice day. High horsepower cars and bad weather don't really mix very well. But for the most part, we've got dry roads, good conditions, so I think we're ready to go. All right, so we're climbing here in the cockpit. It would be an understatement to say that I'm excited for this six-speed gated manual. This thing's so sick. All right, I'm just gonna kind of roll onto it. I'm gonna skip first gear, because I don't want to get too squirrely. Yo! <laughs> Yo, that car pulls hard, dude. You weren't kidding. The six-speed is sick, though. I love, like, it's just, like, it's super satisfying. Like, the clicks. It is. You're when more you get in to the next gear. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. 
And is that the meth you hear spraying in the back? I think so. It's like when you get above like 5,000, that's when it starts spraying. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. This car is honestly so clean too. I mean, everything just works and functions as if it were brand new. It's a 2008, right? 2009. Oh, 2009. Yeah. Okay. 2009, so like 11 years old, and this it's just so clean. Like, whoever had it before me just took super good care of it. <laughs> that sounds so good. <laughs> this car just has it, man. It's got like the steez. Like, it just, there's so much road presence. The exhaust note is just perfect. That six speed gated manual, I won't stop talking about it. Oh, it's so good. One of the cool things too about the R8 is that I feel like it's the most supercar out of all the cars that I'm looking at. And it's just, <laughs> it really shows because like, we're just sitting here in traffic and people just look at the car. Like people, <laughs> like it just looks like a supercar. Just like that, the Audi R8 PES supercharged. This thing is, man, I love it. I have completely fallen in love with this car. I'm honestly not a huge fan of the silver, but I mean, we can change that. That's something that we can wrap over, but oh. So in 2009, the stock Audi R8, uh, 4.2 liter V8 was rated at 420 horsepower. Nice. I believe the PES supercharger system is designed to run at nine PSI. Uh, and then with the water methanol injection, I mean, that should yield more than a hundred more horsepower on top of that. I feel like the real question though is, how do you define a supercar? Because like they're, I feel like everybody has an opinion. The RA, I feel like is a proper entry level supercar. The C8, I feel like it's getting in that territory with the engine in the back. And like, maybe that's the defining factor is the engine in the back supercar status. But a lot of people argue that the GTR is like kind of also in the entry level supercar status. Is it price? Is it above a hundred thousand dollars? I don't know. How would you, comment below, how would you define a supercar? All right, <laughs> unfortunately we're saying goodbye to the C8 for now. I love this car. It's great. So, Tony, I'm thinking of a 2020 Supra, a C8 Corvette, Audi R8, you might be a little biased, or a C8 Corvette. What do you think I should get? C8 Corvette's cool. I don't think they offer it in a manual though, so. They don't. Consider that. That is a very good point, Tony. I do love the gated manual. I couldn't stop talking about that it's when we were driving car. it. I mean, oh, for sure. Nowadays, everything's automatic and it's fun. Don't get me wrong. We, right. We've had a couple of those that are really, really fast. But there's just something about a driver's car with a manual transmission that yeah. just puts everything out of out of place. I'm Antoni. So hit the nail on the head. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate your time. Yo, I don't know, guys. That thing scoots. I could seriously see myself driving one of those. It's big person friendly. It's a family car. It's fast. And I feel like it's just a really good like base to start from for the channel. Thank you guys so much for coming along. I hope you're having just as much fun as I am shopping for cars. It's a super fun process. It's super fun experience. It's cool that this one was actually for sale where the 2020 Supra was not. So this is like a real possibility. It's in my price range. The car's listed at 74.9, so $74,900. Uh, we could pull that off. Anyway, comment below what car you think I should get. Also comment, like, I really wanna know, what do you guys think defines a supercar? Like what makes a car a supercar versus not? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the bell. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.